You know, when I step on stage, I'm not me. It's hard to explain. I leave and somebody else comes. And what happens, I don't know. Happy to see you. Bleibe rest is stay. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome im cabaret, au oh cabaret, to cabaret. My name is Zarina Zabliski. I was born in Leningrad at the time, which is St. Petersburg now. God knows what it will be later. And I live in San Francisco and I'm a writer. My first collection of stories is called Iron. Uh, then I had my novel called We Monsters, followed by a cute tombstone, uh, the collection of poetry and art written in collaboration with my partner Simon Rogue called Green Lions. And my last short story collection is called Explosion. I don't think there was a particular moment when I sat down and thought, ha, that it just was all around me in the air. I grew up in a place which was stuck with books like this and making a book or creating a book was about the biggest aspiration one could have and I picked up on it like this. And so I'm, what, 10 here, I think, goes like, why am I writing this book? It's hard to tell. No, please don't think that I fell through into some fantastic world or that I'm a criminal. It's just I'm thinking and I'm writing. Now you understand why I'm... <laughs> the whole atmosphere of St. Petersburg, then Leningrad, uh, and my family in particular was inspiring because poets or writers were on the top of hierarchy, artists, probably like that. But the writer, the, the person who managed to create a novel was almost like a god. My grandmother had a habit of walking around the house reciting poetry by heart, like out of blue. My uncle and my aunt read Evgeny Onegin by Pushkin or Hamlet to me and my cousins when we were like seven, eight. My father and my mother read like Kuprin and Chekhov to me for the night time. And it was just the world made of literary fantasies. And Well, I wouldn't be the best expert on today's situation in Russia, although there's a huge difference between the generations now. But as for us, it was all about the war, especially growing up in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, where about a million and a half people died during the siege in completely inhuman conditions, and my family did too. My great-grandmother, my great-grandfather, and my great-uncle, my grandmother's 19-year-old brother, who was 19 and he was a poet. They all starved to death in the city, which didn't have electricity, running water, and 40 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what it is, Fahrenheit, temperatures, so everything was covered in ice, there were rats. I mean, and my grandparents, remembered that time. My grandfather's parents were shot by the Nazis in Ukraine. I mean, they, they felt it with their skin. And of course, they, uh, their perception of life was completely different. In her white-gloved hands, she held a large portrait of a sinewy man. Golden words, God, death, love, over the hollow around his head. I never read until five years ago. I, I actually considered reading a poem aloud a sin. 
I honestly thought so because my relatives, like, you know, were roaming around the kitchen reciting Pushkin and I thought it was blasphemy. And then about five years ago when I had my first story published and then one of the friends, new friends, invited me to read for his book open in William Taylor Jr. And I was in panic. I had no idea because I said, like, I, I, I don't read. I think it's a crime to read something that comes from here aloud. And but then, you know, I went and I read and that's how I've been reading ever since. I, I don't know how to read otherwise. I strongly believe that the art can do it. That's why art is there. It can bring us to this pure being when we can rethink the truth for ourselves individually. And that for me is the only purpose of being in general. Forget the groups and collectives and politics. It's just very flat and one dimensional. Art really gives the depth to this otherwise flat picture that doesn't interest me.